Hello everyone, this is Ayush from Frater Pixel. Uh, you might have seen me doing the birthday of, uh, you know, announcements and a lot of fun in the last week. And uh, today is going to be very, very exciting. This is also something new that I am trying. Um, we are bringing three special guests today on the live. It's going to be a panel discussion uh, full of what is going on in the AI industry. and. We are going to gather insights from our, our professional photographers who are also, you know, loving filter pixels so far. So I try to bring, uh, you know, the opinions from different part of the world on AI and the insights uh, from from the industry to help you out with all the questions, all the things that you might have faced so far. I'll quickly brief you uh, what will be the agenda of today. Uh, we will kick off with our guest and there will be a panel discussion. Uh, we will be having, you know, three three guests today and uh, we'll be talking about what we have done in the last few years at Filter Pixel and how the community is liking it. So, you know, share your opinion, right? Just keep sharing uh, in the comments, you know, if, if you have an opinion. But before we go forward and I invite my guests, I would like you to drop any comment in the chat just letting us know where are you tuning from and whether you are able to hear us or not and i think like that would be a quick you know kind of a check for us that we are already live and we are able to uh, you know you know pass those technical issues that we generally face while doing facebook lives so i'll wait for a minute or two just to make sure that everybody has tuned in before i go and uh, invite my guests. Okay, we see come some comments already. Perfect. Uh, okay, let's start with our first guest i would like you all to get introduced to michael michael has uh, you know been a close friend for a while but apart from being a close friend you know he is a professional amazing photographer and uh, you know he always have given us a lot back to the community he has always been the voice and has always been contributed uh, in different ways to filter pixel and then he joined us uh, you know as the head of marketing and growth for North America and uh, I guess you know we will invite all of the guests first to the panel before we kick off introduction and we'll ask our panelists about uh, their introductions. Our next guest uh, today is Garman Demon uh, Hello. and uh, he is uh, you know he has been there at the live when we did it with Adobe Firefly. You know, you all know that uh, he has done a lot, lot of work, uh, you know, in the portrait world. At the same time, he contributed Dream Tone, a profile that you all use uh, in the filter pixel editing today, right? And, uh, you know, and then last but not least, our guest is Shiru John. I, I think we are quite familiar with this face uh being <laughs> have seen that into the community making comments all over and making sure that everybody is engaging and you know feel invited to the community in the conversations hi everyone and uh you know this is great because now we we are not talking to one but actually we're able to gather the thoughts of three professionals at the same time on the controversies that are going on in the ai world and i'm so excited for this one i hope you are too so I would love if you guys go and introduce yourself. Let's start with Michael. Uh, hello and happy birthday. Happy birthday, Filter Pixel turning three. You're no longer a toddler. <laughs> um, I'm a portrait photographer located in Syracuse, New York. Now a part of the Filter Pixel team. I have some really amazing stuff that I'm building outwards for filter pixel and i can't wait to share it with you guys um i'm a fun silly guy and you're gonna see a lot of me a lot all the time <laughs> for sure and and i i definitely agree like 
like uh you know not only a funny guy but you know keeping things very cool when even in the uh you know those those serious conversations like you never feel like it is getting hotter uh you know if michael is already there you are definitely going to see the conversations going on very very smoothly um you know let's let's move on let's move on to german uh german if you would like to add some notes on on your introduction yeah hello my name is edmund dalman i'm a photographer in norway and uh I do mostly like portraits and uh family photography and I also work a lot with uh, making courses in uh, as you can see my green screen is behind me here <laughs> working making courses in photography and AI so, and I'm uh, created the dream tone uh, you know, like profile in uh, filter pixel and uh, I hope most people enjoy it <laughs> it is it is going quite well for dream to a lot of people uh you know use that when they do portraiture and they edit portraiture even shinu has tried it a bit uh, right i would i would love shinu to introduce himself and you know gather some thoughts on dream to uh, very use that <laughs> yeah uh, hello everyone so myself shinu uh, i was i was born in india but i live in ireland now and uh, i do mostly like fine art portraiture as art commissions you know like more like conceptual storytelling kind of an artwork kind of a thing and like sporadically you tend to pick up you know like events and weddings you know just just for the kick of it and you know then german's dream tone came in <laughs> as like for for me as a studio photographer and i use filter pixel i tend to put a lot of time in photoshop and events would be something that, that i don't want to put time in <laughs> and like i was just like pass through filter pixel choose his profile and it comes out like 98% ready to roll to the client and of like for me it's like yeah i can just you know have a cup of coffee cook food and by the time i come back it's ready to be delivered you know <laughs> so that was a big gift from filter pixel and congratulations on you know becoming three it's 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 great to see you grow well, this whenever month. in this conversation people will say congratulations for becoming three i'm going to do this <laughs> yeah congratulations <laughs> Again, once more, once more. <laughs> okay, so uh, you know we'll we'll kick kick off this uh, you know with very exciting things that we have done in the last few years. Sharing particularly uh, the product updates. You know, instead of directly going into the product updates that we have gone through and we have seen it all from the last few years, I would like to ask you. You know, maybe you know if if she know if you can just comment on when you have a lot of duplicate files, right? Mm. Like. and what was the method that you were doing before filter pixel like 3 years down the line filter pixel was not there right like what what yeah. were you doing when uh, you know when you have to go through a duplicates and how the process has evolved now when you use ai uh i would say i'll show show you a tool oh, this one so basically it's like a you know like a zensi lab tablet but like it has like a dial on to it on top of it Yeah. So when I had to like run through duplicates, for me it was like you know one two three four five six seven seven six five three two one, you know, and you just pull back eventually multiple times until you find the perfect balance between sharpness, features, and the mood of the image. And it could be say two of those ten images, and sometimes in weddings you know just you just pray and pray. So I would have say the best the the, the kissing moments, you know, the goodbye moments. you have at least 60 to 70 of them <laughs> and you need just maybe like two or three of them so that personally for me like is like at least five or six minutes spent on it and now say with filter pixels you know you're not choosing the the out of focus images you know you're not choosing the close eye images so that subset of choosing images from that becomes really small as well and while in the filter pixel window you can see them side by side you can zoom in side by side and that just makes decision making so easy so like for me it saved i would say 80% of my time going oh, through and calling a gallery and i'm just thinking i'm just thinking like michael if you can uh you know add a bit on that like when it comes to particularly duplicates even like a family session right like everybody is just standing in that family portrait one eye is closed we don't know in in the next yep. photo if someone else eye is going to be closed right but let me let me add the new inspect mode <laughs> that the inspect mode to be able to just have it show up like that 
who we like <laughs> seriously just before just going back and forth it was so tedious because especially with family photos you got a kid going ah, ah, and parents look at me parents look at me and with filter pixel i can just be like okay here we go here we go and then in the the rare chance that the kid still isn't behaving but i have one and the parents aren't i know that i can select these two and then i can bring it to post processing and finish those later and merge them yeah inspect mode and and, and before we move to garment about the same question i will tell you the story of like how the survey mode came out uh, and it's pretty interesting the way we observed people to actually sit in Lightroom and, uh, you know, select photos that they want to take into a separate mode manually. So they were using like the keys on when, when we were doing user interviews, they were using keys on the keyboard to select few photos. And then they were clicking, like, take it to survey mode. And then Lightroom, uh, you know, opens an interface where it shows all those photos together, uh, which you have taken manually. And then uh, they start removing the photos one by one from that place. Uh, which they don't want, and then finally they end up with two or one, and it's like, oh, this is done. And then they go back, and then they take another set into the survey mode. When we saw that, we observed a few things, like, uh, you know, if we are able to detect duplicates among files, then why people are themselves figuring out what other duplicates should take to survey mode? So how can we replicate that? Can we just... Uh, you know, give give an AI that can figure out the duplicates and then bring them automatically to a survey mode, right? Rather than people putting it into a survey mode. And that was the first step uh, to, to create an interface where if you click that group, you see all the photos of that group, like kind of an auto group. Um, then we realized like, uh, after that, when we did user interviews, we realized like people are zooming in every single photo in the survey mode one by one. And we were like, if if we have already given them uh, you know photos into a single place, then why they are double clicking every single time to zoom in a photo? Uh, so they were clicking double clicking one photo, and then they were like trying to drag, but the drag was not happening, and they were like, oh, I'm not sure why I'm not able to drag after zooming in. So after talking to users, uh, we figured out like they are not telling that, but they need that. Right, and that that was the insight. Like they are not telling us in theory that um, you know if you allow me pan mode along with the you know zoom mode, that would be good, right? They're not giving any suggestions like that. They're just like, why do I have to do this, right? And then the product team has to pick that up in terms of uh, that we need to allow panning inside that frame of a photo. If you have double clicked and then you can pan it anywhere and then drag it anywhere somewhere that became mm -hmm. a key element to inspect uh, that was launched in the latest update and we're getting a uh, good response so far from people uh, you know re the retention and the survey mode has increased a lot um, and people are loving survey mode more than that they were you know few versions back so uh, you know garment any any experiences on the survey mode so far like especially talking about duplicates, not even the survey mode, like duplicates in your own life, like how, how you were de dealing them before. Yeah, but like to pick the images that are in focus, but where they all look good, but maybe the nose is in focus and not the eye and, and that the program are able to pick out those, like when I have like 10 uh, images that are just the same and and 50 picks actually picks the best one that the focus is spot Perfect. on. So, and uh, I've been using it, that it, it helps so much time. It's instead of sitting in Lightroom and like putting them up beside each other and 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 like zooming in 100% just to check where is the focus. And uh, so, and also what the the part about uh, when you have a family photo and and picking the different kids uh, well you can see everyone's face and and knowing which one is <laughs> that also saves a lot of time like picking up like seeing everyone's face at a single frame is really yeah. a key uh i still remember uh you know we as photographers like zooming in every bit of a face and then zooming out then zooming in then zooming out and then 
trying to see that entire uh, photo of having 12 family members to understand mm-hmm. whether the focus was perfect on the face or not, uh, or the eyes are were perfect or open or not, just by like zooming in manually. That were the days, uh, right? Are we, are we missing those days? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. No. That's... You're not even. It's not even that you're just saving time. Like you're saving people's hardware too, because we're all like, click, 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 click. And I have wear marks on my keyboard from before Filter Pixel, and I'm like due oh, for a new computer soon, and I'm interested to see what that's gonna look like because Filter Pixel is just gonna be like, done. So, so actually, the frustration was not only about the photographer it was also uh, you know the entire frustration was going on the keyboard so uh, you know whatever frustration we are having after a shoot it's like boom 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 and the keyboard is dead now <laughs> which i mean uh, are we going to be talking about the no. control center <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> control center is definitely on plate just because uh, first it is very latest and uh, Second, it was a long, long wait where all of our developers were trying to figure out what's the right way to bring controls into the application for a photographer to change them, right? I, I don't know how many of you have tried, uh, you know, uh, changing shortcuts so far. It looks very, uh, you know, kind of basic that an app should have, a, you know, changing shortcuts right like uh, it looks very basic but it didn't come through us very easily because uh, the shortcuts of the application are so much and uh, they're not like any other app in photography world uh, you know it's it's like for every single thing people use keyboard or mouse right they are either mouse users or keyboard users uh, so it was literally hard to figure out which shortcuts needs to be started like needs to be started uh, with and um, we, we just choose whatever was there with Lightroom. But later we figured out like that's not going to work because everybody has a different workflow. So if you if you can shed off some light, uh, Michael, on what are your shortcuts, right? Like, exactly- Well, I'll be honest. I When I met you two years ago, that was like one of the first things I complained about was because I had to go from here all the way over to here to – and now that I don't have to do that, I'm so excited. The first thing when that feature came out was I changed my shortcuts. So my pick and cancel were right there. So I didn't have to reach. I, I'm i just going to out myself. I don't have really, really big hands. I have, I have a medium-sized hand here, but not large enough to go across the keyboard without having to lift my whole hand up. Um, and the, being able to redesign my shortcuts because I'm a shortcut king is so nice it's that's my favorite feature besides besides all the the time saving my favorite new feature is the control center not gonna lie. i love that i love that feature as well and once <laughs> i changed my shortcuts then i realized the value of it right like i was also using p and x on keyboard side by side uh she knew what what were your shortcuts uh you know even before like Twitter pixel, like what were you using in your workflow mostly? Uh, yeah, same. Like I like I had like a, a mini macro keyboard. So that had like 16 buttons allocated to it. So like ratings from one, two, three, four, five. So there would be like, w- when I first would pick an image that is good enough, I would give it like a two star rating and anything below two, two star is just like headed for the bin straight away. So then of the two, I would pick the three star ones. And of which I'd pick the most promising four star ones. And I send the clients to pick from the four star ones. And the final images they buy would be the five star ones. And I think like- yeah. <laughs> it's like a nested workflow. And then there's some which go for print, which get a green color or a red color or yellow color. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I need shortcuts in my life. So- <laughs> and that's why I'm saying, right? Like so many colors, so many ratings, then three three tags. And then, you, you know, you people know. want more. <laughs> I mean, like, people are like, yeah, these are less. I actually want to rate it first green um, and then some of them yellow and purple. I also want highlights. I also want some of the photos for DJ. 
I also want to have like I, I also have a plan to give some to my florist and then <laughs> they end up making it like seven colors you know five readings three tags and they're like now we want customization so <laughs> we're never happy <laughs> we're never happy just get used to it <laughs> so that was a light bulb moment for us understanding our users figuring out um we can't force these shortcuts uh, onto them it has been um you know so so long for them to set up their workflow and uh, they are habitual even photo mechanic users right they were using they were using tag t like as a single mm -hmm. key like untag tag and they were like we need t like why we should use p or u or x for for tagging or untagging um <laughs> right again like a couple of minutes on uh you know your workflow and and uh, shortcuts uh you know if, or if you have tried control center so far yeah i've been trying this one <laughs> the, the loop deck yeah loop deck here yeah i've been using that one and uh and but i'm usually only a couple of stars at three and five and to to kind of and and sometimes it's like picking one and uh, now with the uh, with filter picks i just pick them all uh, that take the ones fit picks I've picked and uh, just give them one and then and like put them into Lightroom and just check if okay I need that one to be five and so I'm still yeah. in Lightroom and picking a little bit more than than what I do with filter pixel as well but it uh, it uh, like to start with to all get all the back the best ones and uh, and usually I like uh, Slide a slider up to get a little better with the, like the eyes and all that and give them maybe a three and then so but I'm keeping to stars Not Perfect. Colors handy. And... <laughs> if, like half the homework is done already for you, you know, <laughs> yeah I think we have some users saying hi to you all. Hi, Christine. Hey, Christine. How are you? We have <laughs> one more. Hey, Wayne. How are you? Hello, um, Wayne. Hello, Wayne. I think like you know, I want everyone are... to spam in the chat happy birthday. So hey, you yeah. just uh, hold up his story. <laughs> we the can sing a song. Go. Happy birthday to the <laughs> well. uh, Let's turn three for the <laughs> We will ask you to write one for us soon. <laughs> um, I, I can comp compose it. <laughs> yeah, chat GPT, you know. That could be a filter pictures opening thing, you know, when you see the logo and you think, you think, you think. <laughs> so um, I think like there is there is lot that we can talk about features. There's so much that happened from control center to inspect. I think like the major changes that uh, happened into editing, uh, you know, we introduced tone curve that changed a lot into the editing space. Then, uh, you know, we ask users to customize their, um, you know, profiles, even if if even if they want to. Uh, customize an expert profile like they're not happy with a certain profile exactly not giving their taste so they can go edit and then change that so more a lot of like things on I think customizations in the last few months and if I talk about uh, you know in the last year a lot of uh, focus on accuracy and understanding users and bringing out from community like what really uh, the people want and what they love and then figuring out that uh, you know, was the key for us. Uh, I will take the discussion majorly to the core of this conversation. Um, you know, I would like to gather opinions on certain, um, you know, topics which have been into this um, new photography world, which were not there like a decade ago or a few years ago, but have been introduced uh, as the technology has reshaped the photography industry. So my first question, and, and this is going to be an open conversation, so thoughts can differ. Um, you know, I, I would love to ask from Michael, let's start with him first. Do you think, you know, the AI is taking over the photography? I think AI is changing a lot of industries. I don't think it's taking over just yet. It's definitely altering the access to be, being a good photographer because it does so much. It's so powerful. There's so many tools that can take someone who's just picked up a camera a couple months to do similar quality as someone who's been doing it for a couple of years. So I'm not saying it's taking over, 
over photography, but it's definitely changing the market and changing what photographers have to do to stand out. I, I agree. I, I think like on the same note, I would like to add, and I mean, I, I would like to actually ask Shinu, like, you know, you think like uh, there are a lot of things that has been changed into the photography world after this new AI era. Um, mm -hmm. How do you think like a photographer, you know, can still be unique to their customer base, even, you know, if it, it is getting easier, uh, you know, for by the technology to get those photos edited in a right way or something. But how does the photographer showcase his unique element? If you have found anything which ha can help a photographer understand, even if there is like AI fear, even if they think like AI is going to take over, how they can establish themselves today? Can they just stop using AI or they should use AI is the actual question I'm going to use, uh, you know, ask to you. Uh, like, like personally, when we say, like, this is more like a, like a philosophy that I believe in. It's like the difference between a photographer and a cameraman. A cameraman can just pick up a camera and take a photo. The, the photographer actually talks to the soul. So that is something AI never has, never will, and never can do. The, the humane touch to like photos. And I think as photographers, people who tend to connect with their clients emotively, where they build up trust, where it is someone they can trust their family to be around, where they trust them to create emotions that will last forever, like, you know, like in photographs, that trust is what can help them stand out. I After think like that. Event, I think like that's that's something I want to hear. Like, uh, it's it's the experience, it's the emotion that that gets you connected to to a person, and it's not just like taking a camera, going out using AI, and then making some good photos, and that's it, right? Like, it's it's an overall experience. Let's move to Garman, uh, you know, and take his opinion on the same thought. What exactly you think, Garman, when it it comes to AI taking over photography, uh, in general? Well, you like the personal images. Uh, AI would, I don't think AI would take over, but a lot of the, 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 you know, uh, fashion, uh, um, commercial photos. I like, I teach also in, in the use of, uh, of, uh, AI programs and, uh, mid journey creating images and, and some of the images you can create are, are really good and they look so familiar and they, uh, they're so, um, so real. And uh, and uh, you can use uh, create a model which you use again and again and in multiple images uh, in different poses and and all so it, you can you can create like uh, like the images you get the story and the personality in the the images and and uh, the images are are always good so like the the composition and and are never never bad in when they create the images and so. Uh, that's in a way uh, the AI could take a lot of uh, those types of uh, images for, and I've seen web pages that uh, uh, use a lot of uh, AI images instead of photography, and uh, and um, um, and I can see that they are AI images now because they're probably a couple of years old. But the, as time goes, it's uh, just getting better and better. So. Some type of photos might uh, might be uh, well, in trouble. <laughs> Just to add, like my thoughts before we move to the next question, I I do believe that you know there is something of fear down in the market when it comes to AI taking over the photography, but uh, responsible companies, responsible AI, uh, you know, which is a term used generally in the AI industry all over, um, you know, I I think there is a way to put. Uh, metadata if if the photo has been created via ai or it has been uh, created or edited by the user and i think like that meta information or embed information into the photo uh, can save us in the future can be registered somewhere in the future and can can if the technology has created an issue after giving it uh, giving us a lot that issue can also be solved uh, by a different technology as well right so i believe like the positive outcome of it is like we are becoming more productive and all but there is a negative part to it for sure the dark truth 
um, and that can also be solved by AI if we think about responsible AI, just not AI. And I, I think like that's my 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 take as well. So a lot of thoughts, uh, you know, government talking about certain industries that can be taken over, and then certain which not be uh, you know taken uh, easily. And then um, you know Michael and Shino also uh, told talked about a bit on the experience and the soul uh, rather than just uh, you know thinking about uh, going out taking a taking a photograph and becoming a photographer. We have a thought coming from a user. I think AI has improved my business. So many people thinking that uh, thinking they can take a photo and use AI to make it amazing, but people are finding out it really does take talent. Right, and and that's coming from a user who, who might have experienced that uh, into into her her photography uh, job. So yeah, we have a new business like uh, uh, a promptographer. I heard that's like the, <laughs> uh, they just sell prompts to people so they can yeah, draw make the prompts and to make good and images. Art. Yeah, and they call it their art. Also, like it's the same word somebody else used, and just the AI spit out something which is slightly variant than what they made. And what part was yours to call it yours? <laughs> you know, so it's, it's a very fine line. I, I, I totally appreciate the fact that people who did not have, you know, access to art or means to create art, this had just had a vision, a cue, and they could describe that in words. They're able to create it, something what they couldn't before. That's a good thing. Mm. But also yeah. the same thing when somebody who has absolutely spent no time in learning the craft calls it. You know, for sure, this is mine. For sure. Uh, let's let's move to our our next question, which is pretty interesting uh, as well. I think it is on the same lines, uh, but a bit uh, different taste to it. You know, and we'll start with Shinu first this time. Like, I would like to take thoughts on, you know, the opinion that the speed uh, is more important than the skill in today's photography world. What do you think about the speed and the skill of a photographer today? Which is do you think is more important, um, you know? And what are your thoughts on that? Uh, for someone who's doing it for a business, speed hundred percent. Like if they are to run a business and they are supposed to churn out clients coming in and out and at a regular pace within a certain deadline, yes, speed is hundred percent important. And only a very small sub subsection of those photographers would be like lucky to be calling themselves like successful artists where they would spend say time on one piece a week maybe and they they get the money according to whatever the quote but for like for someone who's doing the business speed 100 percent, 100 percent. the need that so, volume to come so in shinu cuts that cuts the chase when it comes to business on speed what do you think michael so i'm on i'm kind of on uh, a different side so it goes back to that triangle where you can have things cheap, fast, and quality. And I know Filter Pixel has altered that triangle a lot for me as a photographer. <laughs> However, I do believe there is some, some ways that you can present to your clients and slow some stuff down because I will use, I will use AI for my start and then I add the human touch afterwards, which still is slow. But that's what sets me apart and adding that element of experience and that element of artistry to add quality, to set yourself above the rest, I think is important for how we move as photographers in this next phase of photography because AI is going to do a lot and you're going to need to learn to do something differently in your business to stand out from the person next to you. So you're going to have to start making choices because everyone's going to be like, oh, I did it in a week. Okay, what else did you do to make your client feel that you went above and beyond? Well, I, I think you are playing safe here. Uh, you have mentioned speed at the same time. You're also mentioning, you know, the, the artistic part of it or the skill is really going to be important as well. So we're trying to balance both. And, uh, you know, I, I think like it's kind of going into the direction of the balance. Um, uh, what do you think, German? What's your opinion? Uh, that's a hard one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, speed is important and quality is important. So, <laughs> and uh, and price is important. So, we should I move all down, is the, then uh, the triangle is broken. I um, no, it's uh, I'm not sure. Maybe 
Well, it's important to have good quality in the images. That's that's for sure. But uh, okay. with with, the, with AI, it can help us to get the speed as well. <laughs> playing it I, safe. I, I think like uh, people play safe, uh, but but we have people in the chat who are not going to play safe here. Uh, so we have an opinion from Wayne, uh, who is saying like speed is important to him. He said, I do uh, radio photography and people want to buy photos uh, while their memory is fresh yep. and speed yeah. is one more coming from Chris. Yep. Uh, time is the only commodity I truly value, especially with children and a wife. As much as I love editing all of my photos, when it comes to events and weddings, I need that cheap and fast edit. I think like we have two votes from the chat on this page. So <laughs> we are break even with Sheena. Yeah, uh, like it, it's like high volume, you know, like, like high volume takes time to run through. And this is time you'll never get back in your life. And you learn to value it more later in life you know i could have spent some time with my kids you know while i was yeah. waiting and culling that gallery you know sure sure and, and i think like uh, again it's 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 just like opinions and you know we are not saying what is right what is wrong it's majorly like uh, you know people people find a unique thing in their business some for some they there is speed and for some it's it's just uh, you know the skill or for some it's a combination of the two uh, maybe in different mm -hmm. ratios and not like 50 50 um moving to the next one um and i, I think like uh, this one is a is a bit tedious um you know and uh, it's straightforward as well is manual culling and editing dead i hope so <laughs> okay, let, 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 let's let's move with garmin first oh. yeah no uh, <laughs> yeah i would i would like to be able to just like Fill the pixel, just take all the the the, the calling for me, and uh, just uh, put them in and and finish with it. Uh, calling is the, the the most tedious, and and yeah, um, let's hope uh, so. Shino, what do you think? Oh Jesus! Like I love editing sometimes. I like uh, this image behind me, the one uh, I'm sure you're able to see this, the angel one. That was about 17 hours of edit on a single photo at a stretch. No food, no water. And <laughs> like it eventually it came in like, I literally was like start Saturday. It was like a Friday evening when I started editing. Came out Sunday morning, Saturday morning. And like, like the, there was no wings on that initially. And like I left, saw my cat kill a pigeon. <laughs> and it had eaten with the except one wing. And I started taking photographs of it. And my neighbor's like, dude, you're weird. I was like, yeah, like I have to go back and finish that edit. And eventually it turned into a masterpiece. It's, AI, I feel no, it's, it's an amazing not. story, to be honest. Yeah, I've seen that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, AI can create, has the potential to create something like this. But it, I can't think of any paragraph of words that can make that a piece of art exactly the way that I envisioned it. And I think... Maybe sometimes in the future they could scan brain signals, you know, the and neural link. data from it. Neural link, yeah, exactly. Something like that. And they could help us achieve that faster. But at the moment, I think it's still young. It's still young, but has potential. Okay. Uh, uh, Shino thinks like AI is still a kid, new, new kid in the town. Michael, what do you think? I'm going to lose my job after this comment. Manual culling and editing is not dead. <laughs> um, someone has to be there to prevent the robotic uprising and I'm at the forefront <laughs> jokes aside. <laughs> so I'll, I start off with filter pixel. I have it do the main culling and I'll go back a second time because what I found is if I add in some photos that I don't like, my sales have actually increased because my client likes them for reasons that I know as a photographer, are against all the rules, but they love them because there's an emotion that That's is true. true to them and their yeah. family. So I think you should start with it. And I think you should go back through and be like, you know what? I really did like that one. And I don't think we should get rid of it. If you are on the quick and dirty, you need it in and out and you just need to like the rodeo in a situation like that, you have to have those shots same day. But if you have the luxury, 
I think you should take that time because you're charging your client a lot of money and you should have a little bit of energy to go into that and not rely completely on the software. Please uh, don't fire me. <laughs> <laughs> we, we never heard what he said. No yeah, yeah, yeah. Just ignored everything. Uh, but, but Joseph, I, I still think like there is a scope of review and there should always be a scope of review. The review process needs to be so fast that it doesn't seem like overwhelming or uh, doing more work, right? Like the, the, the product needs to be shaped in such a way that even if people want to review it, it needs to be very quick in the review process um, mm -hmm. so that, um, you know, first it has to categorize photos in a certain way and then it makes it so easy for people to go through rather than putting their brain on every photo. Uh, as Michael said, I, I think like I like the workflow of letting it figure out what is bad, what is good, and then going to the bad ones quickly and figure out is there anything what is more emotional that it thinks is bad, but not from my perspective, and let me pick mm. that up. Um, I think like that one take uh, can can save or can help make a lot of money. Uh, because you have an eye. It's, it's way less photos to look at because it already did the work. So you're like, okay. Yeah. 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 And, and I, I don't think like the best way would be like to click every photo and zoom in. I think the best way would be like scroll. Like quick yeah. scroll to see what all it has missed and then take it back. Uh, yeah. Uh, I love that workflow too. Um, I think like there are a couple of questions. There are actually a lot of questions I have today for you guys. But um, you know, we don't have that much time to actually cover them all. So I'll try to pick up the ones which are really, really important for the audience um, to look into. Can AI photography tools help photographers to stay competitive in some way? Um, that is what a question uh, that came through me, um, you know, for the audience. What do you guys think is, is, is not using, if I rephrase the question, is it like, not using an AI tool today. I'm not talking about culling editing. I'm talking about AI tools in general. Not using an AI tool today. Is it having a kind of uh, less edge in the market if you are a photographer? Oh, yeah. I, I personally Let's... think it depends on your audience entirely. As in, like, say, if somebody's an event photographer or a wedding photographer or somebody who deals with a high volume, like, imagery. For them, like AI tools are like it basically is automation. So every manual effort that you were putting in before now gets put in by the AI. So that allows you the flexibility to put that time back into business doing other things. And that is, I think, very, very much essential for growth as a business. The my, being a my business government. owner has changed so much in the last three years because we have to be doing so much more than what we used to do to get in front of our clients. And needing, I need AI to help reduce that workload and not just through the culling and editing, but writing up proposals, talking to people, trying to deescalate a situation if someone didn't understand the terms and conditions. All of those things to help you come out and look like squeaky clean, AI is where it's at and you need to be using some form of it to give you that edge because you are going to burn yourself out and you're going to have trouble being successful in this modern age of marketing. True, true, 100%. True, 100%. And, and mm -hmm. I, I definitely agree on that. Um, you know, I, I uh, you know, we'll quickly go to Garmin and take his opinion on the same. Garmin, what, what do you think about, you know, staying in the competition when when it comes to using ai tools or just you know skipping yourself from the race and be the cool guy but not today yeah well i've, I've been testing out uh, the 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 new program from uh, from skylum the the aperty where they, they have the the program just reads the face and and removes every pimple and like uh, it, it's uh, the the luminar uh, type of retouch for me and uh, and uh, like it is it, it's like uh, what is it called the 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 portrait editing and uh, portrait pro yeah it's so it's and uh it 
it really helps a lot it saves so much time that as well but like uh, uh, and uh, and also uh, uh, yeah other like program that are using the AI to to help with uh, with more advanced uh, like you can see uh, this week is the Adobe is uh, coming out with all the new stuff <laughs> and yeah they, they, they launched the stuff. wires removal tool this morning what do you say the wires removal tool Oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that one was like, I mean, like I have seen magic eraser so far and then that was more of like distraction removal that, that was launched yeah. uh, in Photoshop. And I was looking at the video. Um, I thought like that's not that real because I figured out like maybe it will leave some part of that, right? Like there was a- You were thinking, uh, how can I add this to my program? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Deep down inside, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because we have it in Lightroom now as well, all the, 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 the generative AI. Generally, like, you need to brush an area and then it removes that. But figuring yeah. it out itself, like, what area is distraction, and then removing it is a class. And I, I, I appreciate that tool because I feel like that going that is going to be a game changer for a lot of people mm -hmm. struggling with removing wire cables from a building <laughs> myself included myself included i uh, had like right. a wedding o over like a hill station and there were like 16 pairs of wires in every single photo 600 of them and i was like jesus this is going to take me a day <laughs> i'm so glad i took the project off for this week and i was like one click solve everything <laughs> yeah well that's how the technology is changing everything right like um who thought that this is going to be a single click and uh, you know now we are living in the world where we are seeing dreams, and uh, you know I, I still get a lot of requests from people, uh, which are crazy, and then they're like, "Dude, you can do that! You know, you see that tool? They did that!" And mm -hmm. uh, expectations are changing, uh, and they should because that gives us a push to go beyond our own boundaries as well. Um, I think like we, we will go with a couple more questions before we jump to the next uh, topic of this uh, you know conversation. I want to understand um, in, in a nutshell, right? And I think you all belong either to the wedding event industry or the portraiture. How do you think AI in general has transformed your individual industries, right? And um, maybe positive maybe negative in whatever way you think and and let's let's maybe start gathering thoughts from german this time if if you have if you have been into this industry for so long you have been into in this industry for the time when there was no ai and now it's like ai ai everywhere right how have you like how are you thinking it is going to change for you and as well as for your industry well, it's a lot of things have changed. I started studying with using film, <laughs> developing <laughs> film. So, and uh, I remember having photos uh, where I was sitting with a piece of paper and writing down the file name on every file after uh, before Lightroom. So, it's uh, been a lot of changes in and all for the better. So, uh, yeah, it's it, it saves so much like the time and 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 yeah you give give your life back <laughs> what about this, what about this uh in a particular industry like portraits or shino for you the uh, portraits oh yeah yeah like similarly like, like portrait uh, as a, a general so what i feel is it's allowed myself to create better work and that too faster so it's a win-win for me and every individual who allows like the integration of ai into their workflow can definitely has ha like basically they open the door to unlock better delivery of their own services and it's up to them how much they desire to make it better you know it's, it takes effort yes but after that effort is just a win-win for you so I, I don't think so why anyone would not embrace ai as part of the workflows perfect i, I do agree that in portraiture itself right like uh, going to that intricacies of, of the photo when it comes to face, when it comes to uh, different part of retouching, it's very hard. And, and client might not see that, how hard it is to just 
see a before and after and figuring out what the photographer did and how it has changed from one before to that after. But it's so hard to go and go to that detail and change things manually one by one, right? And I don't know how you guys were doing it years back when you were not having any help from <laughs> technology. Dodge and burn, dodge and burn. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in the dreams, dodge and burn, dodge and burn. And that became uh, every single day. So many times dodge and burn that was happening. Um, and I, I do believe like AI has definitely helped in that. Michael, what about your specific industry? Uh, how do you think AI has evolved that so far? I mean, it's it's one of those things where photography was a luxury it was for the people who had wealth and the entry of that has changed everyone has a cell phone everyone can take a picture and ai has definitely shifted that playing field to become more accessible for people so people can have the memories and that's what photography is all about is having these memories and while it might shift the field a little bit and have new entries and make it harder for businesses to stand out amongst the crowd, I think overall, people should have memories. They should be printing them. They should be putting them on the wall. And regardless of the industry shifting, I'm excited because the reason I got into photography was for those memories. It wasn't like I need all the money in the world. Yeah, money is what pays the bills. But I'm excited that more people are using photography to express themselves. So, well, side answer. I mean, uh, I, I I agree. I I, I can say like, uh, you know, it's is all about experience. And I I I think like you quoted it right, right? People should be going to print, and it's not going to affect certain parts uh, of of their life for sure. Anything you want to add where you think it has added a positivity into, uh, you know, your day-to-day -day routine? Um, you know, especially, you know, I, I know yeah, that you, you use a lot of chat GPT, right? Like I do. I, I do. I do. I do. It, I think, I, I think it help, has helped rein in me as a business owner and helped reshape me and how I present myself and how I make myself have a better experience than everyone else because I'm doing those extra steps of, all right, let's do research and development with AI. And that's what I use AI a lot for is research and development of me, my product, my experience, because that's what's selling my products. It's not just my photos. Sure, I take pretty photos, but the people who are raving about me, they're raving about my experience. They're raving about my product. They're raving about how I made them feel throughout the whole journey, not just that one moment. Perfect. I, I think like, uh, you know, when we talk about the expectations that have been changed or how the industry has transformed. One question that comes to my mind is on the client end, right? On the customer end, what has changed, right? And and uh, have you seen specifically different type of expectations that are coming from client side? Um, you know, the way they were asking photographers about the job, anything changed on that side for you, Shinu? Uh, not yet, no. I'm lucky that my clientele has been uh, like more picky on the uniqueness of the work that I do. So like for me, if, if it's like art commissions, I know the art that I make is unique for them. It's never been created before. It never would be created again. And they know that AI can't make it. So for me, I'm banking more on the, the emotive side, the creative side for my clientele. Yes, for like events and weddings and like commercial work, mm -hmm. they would, they initially mm -hmm. what they were thinking that like, okay, yeah, for like say a branding photo, like a, a design graphic work for like a cover, maybe they 
I would give them hourly and like bill them hourly. So if it's like 20 hours on a certain piece of artwork, I'll be charged with like say 20 hours of work. But now they think they can just type it into AI and get the result in like 20 seconds. So for them, it's there is no reason for them to spend like a good few thousand on a graphic work when they can spend say six dollars for a mid journey subscription and create something themselves, which they think is good. So for me as a business provider, I need to clarify more on how my work is more aligned to your business needs rather than whatever you made in AI and you think it is, works for you. So yes, it's becoming challenging slowly as in the perceived value of your work is diminishing a, a tiny bit. Very a interesting. Very interesting. What are your thoughts, Michael, on that? Oh, it's, I think it's emboldening clients to have different expectations of us and as we churn out photos faster with higher quality people have bigger expectations for the money that they spend and for someone who charges several thousands of dollars for a portrait session i do have a lot of people who are just like nah i'll take them myself and that's okay because those there's still gonna be a clientele that cares about what you do but it's going to shift in expectations. I mean, look at the car industry. Windshield wipers once upon a time ago were a luxury and now they're standard. We're just going to see new standards and new luxuries of our industry. Very interesting. So uh, it seems like according to you, you know, things are evolving for sure, but then the new standards are kind of more opportunities for people to evolve themselves. Yep. What do you think, Herman? Uh, you know, especially from the client end. You know, let me repeat my question for for the customer side. Do you think anything changed in your industry? Have they started? Uh, you know, have they reached out to you with different expectations? Uh, you know, recently or or anything in the AI world? When whenever the AI thing is coming, uh, I haven't noticed much of uh, like the clients using AI. If that was you, well, other than they have. Uh, their own phones that they probably a lot of people do that instead maybe and uh, and uh, the phone cameras now take so good pictures that a lot of people are satisfied with that so and, uh, and so maybe that's one of the big changes that has uh, that that actually the phone cameras now are so good that people a lot of people are satisfied with it hmm. can i add something to that yeah sure yeah. sure and I think this is speaking to all the photographers out there. Even though cell phones are taking great photos, they go to an area to die. And you get reminded once a year. And these moments need to be relived more than once a year. And this is why I'm a very pertinent pusher of IPS and print sales because – that's where you're going to make more money and you want them to see those photos every day not just once a year and i think that's what you need to sell them is you don't want to relive this past once you want to relive it every day i can't agree more i i still remember michael sharing a facebook post of putting his kids photo on the wall just above the sofa and then there was a beautiful story that he put it in that way and it was it was very inspiring that i it was actually thought provoking that i thought should i consider going back to my galleries printing out some photos make memories out of it put it on my wall uh because i'm not living those moments and and i think like he repeated the same line and that's how uh it linked me back and i i, I think that's really important to to think through that um, you know you are creating memories for someone and maybe they need to be cherished in terms of uh, you know in front of you right not 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 in your digital phones in in front of you in some way uh, and it's a completely different feeling like i'm not sure like how many of you print your own work but like i have like a printer here and when you print it you see you know that print coming out line by line it, it feels so nice to see your work in physical form and it's it's, it's 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 it can't be described it's a joyful feeling and we just i just give a sh sorry sorry michael you're saying something hey i just had an idea maybe we need something like 
filter prints where AI tells you what <laughs> material to print on and how it will be consumed best. Filter prints, patent it. You heard it from me first. Well, <laughs> I told you that I will do that uh, candle three thing when somebody says happy birthday, but I will do that for you this time. Uh, it is, yeah, filter prints. <laughs> Fingerprints. Um, I, I think <laughs> Not I, included uh, in the lifetime deal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think like, uh, you know, memories are, uh, you know, that Shino said like, it, it feels so good. I think it's going to be a happy morning every single day you wake up. Uh, those prints, those photos on your wall, right? They, they definitely motivate you to create better that motivate you to uh, get dressed better if, if, if you are thinking <laughs> from a client perspective, right? Yeah, I was like that. I, I get got a shout, uh, right? I, I think uh, it's for the good. Um, we will move quickly uh, towards one of our, uh, you know, next segment, which is not about these all AI conversations and controversies, but majorly towards, um, you know, talking about our user stories, talking about, what happened in the last few years? What has been a feedback from the customer, from our loyal fans? How they have, uh, you know, helped Filter Pixel in in um, whatever way, uh, you know, they they can, going above and beyond. And uh, let me take a moment to share some of their stories and uh, share my screen. Can you guys see my screen or not? Yeah, you're, you got infinity mirroring, but there you go. You, you see it? Yeah. You yeah, see, you see filter pixel turns three thank you users? Yeah. Uh, I see exit to full screen. Oh, it did. It, you just have to go to full screen now. Get, no, I am on full screen. So you have to switch your, which screen's the main screen? Uh oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now I can see it. You see now? Yep. Visible now. Okay. I don't know if you see it in full preview or still the Canva mode, but whatever it is, we should go quickly. Um, so our users have shared a lot of stories in the last few uh, years of Filter Pixel journey, and we are going to celebrate that today. So we are going to celebrate um, our community. We are going to celebrate all those users who have helped us uh, so far in the journey. And we're going to showcase the 10 uh, best, uh, you know, things that we have heard from them, even in the hard times, right? Like things are hard. Uh, and, and these testimonials are the ones where we have always went back to and that team and, uh, you know, took motivation again to come back to it. So the first one is from Carissa. Uh, you know, she, she is definitely, uh, she is definitely in the group. Uh, and Carissa, if you, if you see that, thank you so much uh, for sharing this with us. Um, you know, in 2023 August, Carissa told uh, Filter Pixel has streamlined her culling process. I think like the most important thing I, I liked in that particular frame is she being the mom um, actually has saved a lot of time and invested that time back with, with uh, you know, her, her young children. And that actually standard uh, stand out from uh, other testimonials uh, in this one. We also have Stacy uh, who who was using Photo Mechanic before, and then she talked about how good the customer service was in terms of solving issues for her. But what what I liked mostly uh, your uh, you know and thank you so much Stacy for sharing that. Um, that, um, you know, she got in touch very quickly at, at that moment. I still remember the conversation where she was stuck and was not able to move forward. Uh, but there was a customer support. And, you know, uh, I want to tell it to everyone that if you face any trouble, there is an in-app support that Stacy also used. It's 24-7. You can go and, uh, you know, talk to a real human, not AI there, real human, right? And that's what Stacy talked about, that it's a real human experience. 
we have uh, you know other testimonials as well uh, you know sometimes trust pilot make it uh, you know kind of anonymous so we don't know who is mm but whoever has written it thank you so much and uh, we understand like as a family photographer how difficult it was for you um, to go through all those culling galleries and we talked about she talked about also like that family photos uh, problem of going through culling them you know where it misses a lot of focus and uh, blurry shots so cutting down to them and cutting down uh, the time for her was was the best best thing kesi uh, i i remember kesi very well because uh, we had couple of meetings um, you know kesi thank you so much for providing such a detailed feedback uh, you know to filter pixel so far and uh, i know you you are in the group and you keep providing feedback to us and one of the reasons we have been uh, able to made this product so far is because of you uh, right so thank you so much i i think uh, you know when we talk to kc he he is actually an event photographer uh, he does events and it was a problem for him to deliver those event galleries on time um, i i think his major challenge was just going through those photos when the event was over and deliver that into 48 hours of turnaround time which actually uh, you know changed like the entire workflow which he was doing changed tremendously uh, when he started using uh, filter pixel we also have john um, you know who incorporated it recently in in feb uh, 2024 and uh, fine tuning or customization in general uh, was a standout feature uh, you can change everything uh, in the customizations and uh, make it like your personal assistant and uh, i think uh, he has experimented with an alternative culling software uh, but he liked this one better just because of customization features thank you so much john uh, for writing this this means a lot to us as well our next uh, you know user is ariel uh, she has been using for 6 months uh, you know filter pixel and uh, she actually uh, you know wanted to tell that to developers uh you know that uh, thank you so much that they listen to their customers so as you understand we are a community based uh company we always focus on community based conversations and take them to take them to product feedback so if you are a part of this community uh, which uh you know i think you are right now because you are seeing this live please uh share your feedback or whatever you want to see into filter pixel next and we will make sure that we are able to make that happen for you um we'll move quickly to our few of the last testimonials uh kelly you know said that it is a kind of tool uh that help her to work smarter thank you so much kelly and then there's one uh testimonial from one glint uh, media which is specially doing marathons which is very unique case for us and corporate events and again that was a time saving tool for them thank you so much one glint we have julian uh, who have did who has added uh, fp to the photo sorting and uh, you know lot lot has changed in terms of speed so again we are seeing some speed improvements also like uh, haven't got a chance to delve into editing features yet julian i i, I think uh, you should try editing features now they're more more uh, better than before and i think you will be impressed by seeing the results and uh, you know if you have any feedback we are here in the community and you can drop us a note okay we also have one um, which is from kk I, i don't know the name actually but it is kind of anonymous uh it has saved a good deal of time uh, the option to adjust the filter again i think it is going towards customization i think people are loving customizations and uh, you know they are able to deliver the entire gallery in one day flat time and they have tried multiple culling softwares uh and this one was better for their workflow so i just want to bring that up because you know it might be like uh that something something will work for you better than filter pixel and it's totally fine uh, but uh this this was important because if if it is our birthday anniversary we we really want to thank everyone who have contributed to this birthday right who have contributed to our 3 years of journey and these 10 users have always been there if they know it or if they don't know it uh it's a kind of a place 
in in our uh, in our trust pilot and uh, we always go check and it it fills us with a lot of positivity whenever there is a hard time and whenever there is a hard situation so thank you so much to all of our users who are listening to this and at the same time if you are a part of filter pixel and you have contributed and you are not into that list still thank you so much for making it possible making us possible for 3 years in this journey well it's a, uh, it's a pleasure to push the candle again because you congratulated yeah. yourself in 3 years <laughs> happy birthday all the drinks are in a you happy birthday yeah <laughs> how 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 good is it like we are three people it's three right like it's a coincidence or or it is it is very well planned like there is something into it ah mm. uh, okay so before we wrap up last few things right we have uh, been through the major features we have seen some controversies today different opinions and then we also went uh, into you know being thankful uh, to all those users who have contributed to our journey i will i will like to take the final comments from our panel uh you know on or any thoughts or any questions they have for me but couple of updates before we move to that conversation in the next updates our users are going to see crop and straighten and which is a very uh like whenever i do polls into the facebook group everybody's like crop and straighten crop and straighten <laughs> yeah, yeah. so we prioritize that so crop and straighten is going to be the major major release that we are planning and the second one is definitely improving the accuracy for both editing and culling on which we are working hard and there are a lot of improvements that are going internally which are not out yet so just giving you a glimpse of what is coming next in the few months um and then there is a third thing which i'm not going to tell huh? <laughs> you called us all the way over here to not tell us <laughs> <laughs> i mean the sad part is i know the road map and i can't wait for birthday number 4 because this next year of filter pixel yeah boom that's that's all i'm going to tell you uh. <laughs> for sure for sure <laughs> don't do it yeah, we will wait for version. I'm four. selling my information to the highest bidder. <laughs> <laughs> um, before that, also there is one more, more, um, you know, one more announcement. If you have been uh, writing, you know, the story, your story at the Filter Pixel community with the hashtag Filter Pixel Tons Three so far you have already been uh, participated into the lifetime deal so before you ask me when we are going to release those winners we are going to release 10 winners for the lifetime birthday deal on 17th of october uh that's tomorrow mm -hmm. right it would be pst so 17th of october pst uh you know we will release it and then those who will not win it there will be something special for every member. So, and what is that? I'm not going to tell. Oh, right. we'll, we'll, we will reveal tomorrow. There are a lot of things uh, we are, but uh, you know, if you are, uh, you know, currently having uh, this live, you know, and then you have any questions, you can ask me right now or later. You can just put it into the comments and I can go through them. Okay, final. We will going to take some closing notes uh, on your conclusions, uh, right? AI in general, if you want to define uh, in 2024 in photography in few words, we'll just uh, take a minute uh, to pause so that people can think, uh, right? But don't overthink, right? Whatever comes to your mind, um, you know, if you want to define AI, in 2024 in photography in few words what do you think they would be and that's our closing note and there will be end the conversation so let's start with the most challenging person here michael 
challenging. Wow. <laughs> wow. That we will remove. That with this answer challenging. Like I think, as new tools arise. It's important to be on the bandwagon for those new tools. And that goes for social media. It goes for AI. And the sooner you adopt new things and continue to educate yourself, the better you are going to be at a business standpoint. And you need to dive in. And if you haven't dove in yet, now's the time to do it. If you're watching this in a replay and you haven't pulled the trigger, it's time. Add this Pull to the your trigger. Pull the trigger. That's Michael's final word. Pull the trigger to AI. Uh, what do you All right, don't get me canceled it? here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say it's more like a ass digital assistant on steroids. <laughs> so uh, every assistant helps. So make your job, make your life easy. Like who would say no to that? <laughs> you know, that's all I'd say. Okay, so it's 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 digital assistant on steroids for <laughs> yes. teenagers, right? Uh, Garen, what are your final thoughts? AI in photography in 2024, what do you think? Uh, what's, what's the quote? I, uh, it's not AI that's going to take our jobs. It's the ones that uh, learn Using. how to use, use AI that's going to take the jobs from the people who don't learn to use it <laughs> or something like that. So interesting interesting yeah i i agree i think uh it, it is it is true that um you know actually it was my thought uh, argument <laughs> but <laughs> you have told it before me but yeah it's fine uh it's more of like i agree because i think it's going to be you know the people who are smarter and becoming smarter every single day especially the photographers who are going to replace other photographers and it's not going to be the AI who is going to replace photographers in any way. Right. Mm -hmm. So with, with that note and with those controversies, insights, new features, and a lot of, you know, blessings from our users, we will end this live here and we'll again, um, you know, let you know um, that it's three years to filter pixel, right? So make sure that you write <laughs> happy birthday whenever you see live in the comments. See you all soon. And thank you so much for keeping Happy in. birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Thanks for having us. <laughs> thank you so much, to my <laughs> panelists, to be here and being a part of this amazing, amazing conversation. And, uh, you know, I would, I would just end this live here on a positive note that AI is not going to take your jobs. AI is going to help you grow faster. And the sooner you adopt it, the sooner, the sooner you adopt it, the faster you will be able to be on that road, um, you know, where, where you can see your growth yourself rather than just fearing or just being scared about this new kid into the market. So thank you so much again, uh, the panelists for joining this conversation and we will chat again soon. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Have a lovely day. Yeah.